Hey guys, this is a video in my differential equations with linear algebra series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the Laplace transform of f of t over t. I just rewrote that here, Laplace of f of t over t. The example we are going to work through is 1 minus e to the negative t over t. So please watch the entire video. I want to try to simplify this as much as I can. At the end, I'll try to present this to you in the way that I think about it. Without further ado, let's get to it. If we have 1 minus e to the negative t over t, to put it in this form, we can treat 1 minus e to the negative t as f of t, and the t here uh, can stay as just t. Another thing that we're going to have to keep in mind is the definition of Laplace transform. The definition of Laplace transform is integral of f of t times e to the negative st dt from 0 to infinity where f of t is the function being Laplace transformed and f tilde of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. Notice that whatever function is being Laplace transformed is just multiplied by e to the negative st. Since whatever is being Laplace transformed is multiplied by e to the negative st, then the Laplace transform of f of t over t would look like this. So how can we get this to look like this? Well, if we integrated this with respect to s, then f of t would be treated like a constant since it's a pure function of t, not s, then we'd have e to the negative st, and we'd have to divide by negative t. That would be if we integrated this with respect to s. This looks like this, except with the negative sign. So we know we're going to have to integrate the Laplace of f of, Laplace transform of f of t. So first, let's go ahead and find the Laplace transform of f of t. So we're going to try and find the Laplace of f of t, which is the Laplace of 1 minus e to the negative t. And since Laplace is a linear operator, we can split this up as Lapla uh, Laplace of 1 minus Laplace of e to the negative t. Then Laplace of 1 is just 1 over s minus Laplace of e to the negative t is 1 over s plus 1 and that's equal to f tilde s. Now we're going to replace this s with any other variable, any other dummy variable other than s. So I'm going to choose x, so we're going to say this is f of x, and wherever I see a s, I'm just going to replace that with x. So we have 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1. Then we know we're going to have to integrate uh, the Laplace of f of t, so we're going to integrate this. 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 dx and we're going to integrate from s to infinity. We know we're going to need s's in the final answer since Laplace's. Laplace transforms are in terms of s. So next we're going to go ahead and integrate this and we get natural log of x minus natural log of x plus 1 evaluated from s to infinity. Using the property of natural log, uh, since two natural logs are subtracted, we can write that as natural log of x over x plus 1 evaluated from s to infinity. Next, we're going to say that limit as x approaches infinity of natural log of x over x plus 1 is equal to 0. So when we plug in infinity for the upper bound, we're going to get 
zero minus whatever we get when we plug in the lower bound so that's just natural log of s over s plus one notice that there's a negative sign here and remember that when we uh, we said when we integrate the Laplace transform of f of t we get this additional negative sign with this so this negative sign here takes care of this additional negative sign so that's why s is the lower bound now I want to show you another way of thinking about it evaluating the upper bound uh, gives us zero so we get zero minus the integral evaluated at at s. A quick way to think about it is the negative integral of f tilde of s uh, ds without the plus c. There is no plus c. So let's say for instance we just did negative integral of 1 over s plus or minus 1 over s plus 1 which was the Laplace transform of f of t uh, with respect to s, then we get uh, negative and then we get natural log of s over s plus 1 which was our answer. So this is just another way to think about it but if you wanted to show it uh, on an exam or something you might want to do it the other way. I hope this helps. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll try my best to help out. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel, especially the differential equations with linear algebra series. Also check out the graphing and scientific calculator tutorial series. Follow my channel on Facebook. And until next time, take care, guys.